Okay, so uh, today I'm going to be doing a reflection about revisiting the site of my childhood trauma and, and in particular my boarding school. So I'm going to do some reflections and some, yeah, what I learned from going back to my boarding school for the first time in inside my boarding school first time in 25 years so uh, just going to talk a bit about that okay yeah so um, big thank you to those uh, who do watch my films who knew I was going thank you for your support uh, so on Saturday um, we're talking 2023 here I went back to my old boarding school it was an open day and it's been 30 years since I left, so I figured it was time to go back. Uh, I knew it would be challenging. I didn't realize how challenging it would be. Uh, so I've definitely learned something from it. So what I'm going to do today is just talk a little bit about what it was like visiting the different places. I heard a, a talk from the headmaster as well, so some reflections there. I uh, went and visited the boarding house, the chapel, the dining hall, uh, and I also saw people I was at school with as well. So, um, how was that? So, um, yeah, that's the plan today. Yeah, so I have been back to my boarding school, but not inside it. I went back a few months ago, but I hadn't been inside the school for 25 years at least. I think I went back for an old boys day old pupils day in probably in the 90s um, so we're talking 20 25 old years and yeah I think it was good I went back with my wife I went back with one of the friends who I was at school with who I shared a study with on my sixth year and you know Surprisingly, there weren't that many people there. And it's not surprising on one level because the school has been in the press a lot about abuse. So therefore, I think a lot of people don't want to go back. Um, I went back partly for healing. It's like to see, okay, to see maybe, maybe some wounds which are still there. And I've done a lot of work through doing my EFT, kind of in my mind revisiting the school, but I haven't been back and visited it. So it was useful just to see some of those things I've still got to work on. Um, some of those being, when I was meeting people from my school, it was like the way I survived at school was to not talk. I learned to be totally quiet. Um, just kind of scowl and <clears throat> and just look at people angrily you know if anyone spoke to me so I, I, that was my survival mechanism and I realized that the belief beneath that was I'm nobody I don't exist and the other one was uh, I have no voice and yes that was my way of surviving and as I went back into that scenario it was like wow that came up because I saw people that I was at school with. You know, I changed my name. I wasn't called Piers <laughs> at that school. I was the first week or two. And then I changed my name to Simon because I didn't want to get bullying. So when someone saw me and they said, oh, it's Simon, I'm like, God, I haven't been called Simon for 30 years. <laughs> and, you know, as soon as I left school, I changed my name back to, to Piers within a week. <laughs> so... Um, it feels, it felt kind of quite, quite weird. Um, yeah, so we visited the dining hall first off. We went in there and it just came for me as like just how big the space was. I mean, you had 900 people in the dining hall at any time. And for me, it was feral. You know, the first few years, you had to really fight for food. If it was lovely food, you would, wouldn't get any. So you had to go and wander around the dining hall trying to get food from people, uh, from the other kind of kids. 
Um, you know, it was the same tables which are in the dining hall that were there 30, 40 years ago, same tables. Um, and how it's changed now, it's now a cafeteria and that was the shock, it was like, wow, it's this lovely kitchens now, whereas for us it was, you know, it was quite a daunting place, you know, to eat a meal. I think Joy Chavrin talks about that, saying that meal times need to be very relaxed, calming, you know, so we can digest. And uh, Bruce Lipton, in his work, the um, the cell biologist, says that when we're in fear, all of our um, energy moves out of the digestive out of the the main organs goes into our extremities it's getting us ready to to to, to be in flight or you know run away or fight and that for me was the the experience of going back in that hall was ah to remember i was just in fear in there and i really struggled with food at that school um one there wasn't a lot of it and therefore I relied a lot on tuck, chocolate, crisps, things like that. And then the other thing was, you know, just that fear of, you know, being in that environment. So that brought that, that back to me, the size of the space, and I wasn't relaxed. Um, I was admitted to hospital for, for stomach problems while I was at school and they never really asked me about you know, the environment or what I was eating. <laughs> so, so that was the first thing, the dining hall. After that, um, we went to the chapel and we went, to, there was a talk by the head teacher and you know, hats off to him on one level, he seems to be doing, he's done this statement of acknowledgement about the child sexual abuse which has gone on at the school. Uh, he's actually put that out, which I think is really good. It's like, how can we start to get other boarding schools to start taking the same responsibility? As he was talking, he did mention something about uh, the, what did he say? It was something along the lines of, yeah, speaking to the deputy head, the 11 year olds are struggling at the moment, fighting, fracas, and the, the deputy head says, maybe it's too young for them to be at boarding school and that's my my feeling and Nick Duffel says the same you know um, and so that was an interesting insight he didn't agree and he felt it was to do with COVID but I agree with the deputy teacher so you know so being in the chapel yeah we had to go you know three to five times a week and the um, you know, one of the main sexual abusers in the school was the the priest, so it wasn't really a safe space. Um, you know, where else should we go? After that, then we went to uh, the boarding house. You know, we looked around the junior boarding house, the senior boarding house, and interestingly, things like the day room hadn't changed. You know, the place where we played games, there was still a table tennis table there what shocked me and kind of triggered me a bit is that they now have this key card system you can't get in and out of the boarding house without a key card and so we couldn't get out we were let in by the housemaster but we couldn't get out and it was like <gasps> that felt a bit frightening to me like that claustrophobia you know that real captivity um so yeah that that brought stuff up for me and i just thought yeah, it hasn't really changed it's the the toilets they don't use the toilets downstairs, um, but the doors that we had when we were there were still there, you know. Um, so that was a bit like, um, a, a bit shocking. Um, what else? We went to also to the infirmary. We visited the infirmary, and they had they've got a museum there, so we had a look around and. Saw some photos of, you know, people I knew, um, and you know they had the the uniform. We could try on the uniform, things like that. So, um, yeah, and they also had our old beds, which, when I've mentioned to other people in boarding schools, they were like, "Oh, it was kind of a 
Um, you had springs, you know, we didn't get spring mattresses till we were 16, 17. As a 11, 12, up until probably 6, 15, I think, it was a horsehair mattress on a kind of a Crimean bed frame, metal bed frame with boards across. And so they had, you know, that on show. And it was like, wow, that was the bed we had for, for so many years. Um, and then the final bit we went to was the railway. Uh, the railway line runs through the school and uh, this was the place where um, one of my friends when I was 14 committed suicide. So there was a few tears there and I laid some flowers uh, in memory of him, you know, really blessing him. Uh, so yeah, that was, that was triggering. So there was some tears there and it was, it was a struggle and I noticed that one of my ways to cope at school was to become a victim, more in my mind, and that was triggered a bit. You know, the poor me. I remember being in the school and one night really upset, just going, why me, why is life so hard? And that was one of the stories that I told myself until more recently. I mean, in the last 10 years, I've started to work on that, see, ah, oh, you know, moving from victim to creator, from poor me into, ah, oh, what do I want? What can I do about this? So. Um, that was useful to see again. So what did I learn from this experience? I think one of them was the hidden trauma. So Annabel Gonzalez talks about this, that um, she's saying in her book, The, the Psychiatrist, it, it's, it's Not Me, says something along the lines of, you know, with trauma, you know, as children, we believe that our parents are going to be there to take care of us and they're going to regulate their own emotion. But when they're not there, this can give rise to hidden traumas. And she goes on to say that these hidden traumas are not by so much uh, what happens to us, but by what is missing. So that really helped me to see when I went into the school, especially meeting people I was at school with, you know, my belief was I was a piece of shit. That's what I learned at school. And being around you know, people I was at school with, like, oh, yeah, that hidden trauma, that, because I hadn't been back, it was like, ah, oh, it, it was there again. Um, so that was something. Um, yeah, I realized that certain things had changed, you know. Um, there's certainly the food systems changed, I've seen that, you know, the, the cafeteria, um, I'm seeing as well, you know, they're talking more about getting the kids more outside, which is great. You know, the thing that I saw was lacking is this emotional intelligence. It was kind of talking about the school, saying, you know, we're great at this, we've done great A-levels, great at sport. But what I want is those other aspects, the, the emotional, the spiritual side. What, how are we developing those in these children? Um, and I, I wasn't really hearing that. Um, I met a master at one point. And he was going, oh, you were, you know, at school here? And I was like, yeah, yeah, good or bad? And I said, pretty bad. <laughs> and he says, oh, I'm so sorry, you know, I'm really sorry. I hope, you know, you find healing. So it's like there's an openness with the teachers, which when I was at school, it was very much, you know, you do not talk about it. I've heard people who were expelled um, who or threatened expulsion if they spoke up about the abuse and what went on. Um, so that that's, feels positive there. Um, yeah, and I think maybe something else which came up was seeing people that, yeah, meeting people who were I was at school with the same year as me, and they've sent their child to these schools. And that hurts. But, you know, my father was at boarding school, and he had a, you know, what he told me, did didn't have a good time and yet he sent me to school and therefore it hurts when I see someone I was at school with you know this the, the amount of abuse and the, the trauma which was in this school from what I know and from what I've heard from s dozens of others and yet they still send their children there that hurts and I, I, I saw those that you know so that shocked me a bit um, so yeah so that's kind of really the reflection. I think in hindsight, I think I could have been better prepared. Um, you know, it triggered me. 
Uh, I didn't realize it would trigger me quite in this way, um, you know, because I've done so much work. You know, I think the Saturday night I was exhausted when, you know, we'd driven a lot. I think it was almost 14 hours return journey. Uh, we did kind of stay off somewhere on the way back. But I was pretty exhausted and felt quite emotionally spent on, on the Sunday morning. So just if you are thinking of going back, really resource yourself, you know. Uh, get a good night's sleep. Maybe, you know, for me, I, I have the tapping that I use, which helps clear. You know, it's maybe taking a, a sheet of paper and write on it, you know. When you go into that freeze response or that trauma response, uh, breathe you're okay, you're not who you were at school, so just having those there, I think I didn't have that, I was very busy before leaving and I prepared, but I could have prepared better, so that's a real good learning for me that, ah yeah, we're going to go back to our schools make sure you you really prepare well um, and next time I go back I hope to go back certainly next year, they're going to open up hopefully a day for sexual abuse survivors, uh, I will go back for that. Um, so yeah, so yeah, I'm glad I went. Really glad. Real blessing to my friend who came with me and my wife. Um, and yeah, it just yeah, I think one things another thing which came for me is realizing just how fucking difficult. And I excuse my my language, how fucking difficult it was. And I I think. I know that because I've, I've been on a really difficult journey uh, post school. I break down, you know, self harming, trying to commit suicide. And I know that, but going back really was like, wow, yeah. This was a really difficult time for me. Um, a really difficult time. Um, so, yeah, I'm glad I went. I'm glad I went. So, yeah. Thank you so much uh, for listening. If you have any questions, reflections, please do let me know. So podcast on Friday. Excited to be speaking to Naomi Murphy, who's one of the UK's leading forensic clinical psychologists, worked in prison. We talk about the similarities between prisons, boarding school, uh, and the amazing work she's done with some of the, you know, most... Um, hardened criminals, helping them to open their hearts again, feel, cry, connect to their emotions and just how we can bring that into the work that we do with boarding schools and trauma. Um, so looking forward to seeing that as well. So yeah, bless you for listening to this slightly longer today. Um, but yeah, thank you.